Hello everybody, this is Robin Norgren. I'm your third grade teacher in Arizona going over Common Core Standards. Today's Common Core Standard is the subject verb agreement. This is something that I find my students struggling with and I hope that this is a help to you in your classroom um, to really get a handle on what it means to have the subject and the verb agree in a sentence. So let's begin. Well, what is subject verb agreement? Subject verb agreement is when both the subject and the verb are both singular or both plural in a correct sentence. Here's an example. The subject is Gabriel, also known as the noun. And it's one person, Gabriel. And if I were to write a sentence about Gabriel, I would say, Gabriel kicks a ball. When I'm trying to make the subject and the verb agree, if the subject or the noun talks about one item, then I will put an S or an ES on the verb. Here's another example. Kids. How many kids are we talking about? Two. So that is more than one, and we call that plural. When we have more than one noun or subject, when we talk about what the, the subject is doing, and it has more than one, what we call plural, we do not put an S or an ES at the end of the verb. So here's an example. The kids walk to school. Here's another one, Betsy and Nora. This is a compound subject, talks about two nouns, and it uses the conjunction and. We've talked about this in other videos. Please go back and check that out if you want a refresher on compound words, or on, um, I'm sorry, conjunctions. Now, what verb would I put with a subject that has two different or more than one um, noun and it's using the word and to connect it. Well, the rule is, is that when I have more than one uh, nouns or more than one subjects that I'm referring to, when I add the verb, I do not add an S to that verb. So in the example, Betsy and Nora, we would say Betsy and Nora Nora walk to school. Here's another way to think about it. If we can separate the two subjects, Betsy walks to school, we would put an S. But once we put two of them together, we no longer need the S. So it would be Betsy walks to school, Nora walks to school. But when we add both of them together with the word and, Betsy and Nora walk to school. We would take the S off the end of the verb. Now here is a rule breaker. Singular subjects like I or you, we do not add an S. I go to sleep, you go to sleep. All right, let's practice. Are you ready? Here's question one. The girl laugh or the girl laughs. That's correct. We would use the verb with the S at the end because we're talking about one subject, girl. The next one, she jumps, she jump. Now here's a rule breaker for you. It's a pronoun. So we have she and then we use the S at the end for jumps. Always looking out for rule breakers in the English language. Let's try the next one. They smile, they smiles. Okay, here we are looking at a pronoun, but what is this pronoun talking about? More than one. So we would put an S at the end of this 
of this, uh, this verb. The dog sit, the dog sits. Many times you can trust your ear that as you're listening to the sentence, you know from reading many books and having many books read to you, and then you've had plenty of conversations by the time you've gotten to the third grade, sometimes even if you don't understand why, listening to it as you hear the sentence helps you to figure out whether or not you should add an S at the end for that, plur that subject verb agreement. All right, now here's five sentences that we're gonna practice with the subject verb agreement. These sentences are gonna cover different scenarios where the subject verb agreement is important. Now remember, the verb should agree with the subject in terms of number, whether it's singular, meaning one, or plural, meaning more than one. The cat, blank, sleeping peacefully on the couch. Would we use the word is or are? Let's try using that rule that I just mentioned. The cat is sleeping peacefully on the couch. The cat are sleeping peacefully on the couch. Well, first we'll find the subject. The subject of this sentence is cat. Are we talking about one cat or more than one cat? Yes, just one cat. And so if we are talking about one cat, we will use the verb that has the S at the end. The children blank playing in the park. The children is playing in the park. The children are playing in the park. All right, let's look for the subject. The subject of the sentence is children. Does that tell us that there is one child or more than one child at the park? More than one. So therefore, we will choose the verb is. The book on the shelf belongs to my friend. The book on the shelf belong to my friend. She blank three brothers and two sisters. She has three brothers and two sisters. She have three brothers and two sisters. Okay, so let's look at the subject. The subject is she. Is that one person or more than one person? That's right, it's just one person. She has or she have. Again, following the rule that we've mentioned, has would be the one we put in that blank. The team captain, along with her teammates, blank excited for the upcoming game. The team captain, along with her teammates, is excited for the upcoming game. The team captain, along with her teammates, are excited for the upcoming game. Now this one might be a little tricky. Let's look at this sentence. Do you notice that there are commas there? that break the subject into two different parts, the team captain and along with her teammates. When we're looking at the verb, we are going to notice the first part of the subject, the team captain. The team captain is excited for the upcoming game. The team captain are excited for the upcoming game. All right, here are the answers for all of those slides that we just went through. The cat is sleeping peacefully on the couch. The children are playing in the park. She has three brothers and two sisters. 
The book on the shelf belongs to my friend. And the team captain, along with her teammates, is excited for the upcoming game. Now that last sentence might be a little bit tricky for you and again might take some getting used to, especially with how you hear it, but continue to practice and this will become second nature to you. All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming by. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, all things third grade going on over here, ELA along with math, and I post videos two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thanks so much for stopping by.